And hi, gang of my radar meteorologist, Matt Capucci. You know, this Thursday night into Friday morning, you could see a very red moon thanks to a near total lunar eclipse. It will be visible from all of North America except Eastern Greenland, including everywhere in the entire United States. Now, the reason I say not quite a total lunar eclipse is because in this case, the Earth's shadow, the Umbra, blocks about 97% of the moon, so it won't be fully occluded, but most of it will be blocked. Now, for all intents and purposes, this is pretty much as close as we can get to a total lunar eclipse without it technically being total. On paper, it's only about 97% occultation, meaning the moon is mostly blocked by the Earth's shadow, but that said, it's not all the way. So in this case, it looks like a total eclipse, but it's a little bit different. Lunar eclipses occur when the Earth intercedes between the sun and the moon, meaning the Earth blocks sunlight from reaching the moon. That can only occur when the sun and the moon are opposite each other in our night sky, meaning a full moon. There are three types of lunar eclipses, penumbral, partial, and total. That's because there are multiple regions of the moon's shadow. The penumbra is the broadest, most peripheral region that doesn't really make too much of a difference, but the umbra is the darkest part of the moon's shadow. That's what you need for partiality or full totality. The penumbra first nicks the moon at 1.02 a.m. Eastern Time Friday, or roughly 10.02 p.m. Pacific Time Thursday night. We won't really notice anything then. The umbra begins sweeping on the lunar disk by around 2.18 Eastern Time, so that's when we'll first start seeing some noticeable darkening. Maximum eclipse occurs when 97% of the moon will be blocked right around 4.02 a.m. Eastern Time. So 97% of the moon will be encompassed in the umbra. That's the darkest part of the Earth's shadow. And it'll actually kind of turn the moon sort of red. The reason being, at that point, some sunlight, not a lot, but some will be escaping through Earth's atmosphere kind of tangentially, so lengthwise. And it has the same effect of reddening that you see at sunrise or sunset when most of the sky appears red. So picture all the light from all the Earth's sunrises and sunsets simultaneously projected onto the moon, and that's why it'll have kind of this rust-colored glow to it. This partial eclipse will last three hours and 28 minutes, and according to space.com, that's the longest partial eclipse in 580 years. So even though it's not total, it will give you plenty of time to watch it. A lunar eclipse is very different from a solar eclipse. During a lunar eclipse, anybody on the side of Earth that faces the moon can actually see it and enjoy it. A solar eclipse is much rarer and much more special to see, but the two come in pairs. This one corresponds to a total solar eclipse that will occur over Antarctica in about two weeks on December 4th. Solar eclipses take place when the moon blocks sunlight from reaching Earth in a path only a few miles wide. When the moon fully blocks the sun, day turns to night, and we can actually see the sun's atmosphere. It is a remarkable thing that really is a surreal, otherworldly experience. I've seen three so far, and I can tell you there's nothing on Earth like it. This is actually a picture I took in Chile in 2019. You can see the little hairs radiating out from the sun behind the moon. That's the sun's atmosphere. This time around on December 4th, if you want to see it, there are tours, but you'll have to go by cruise or air because it doesn't really hit anywhere on land other than Antarctica. If you're planning to go the cruise route, it does go to Antarctica too. I'm personally very jealous. It'll run you tens of thousands of dollars, a little outside my price range. For something a little bit more affordable, Sky and Telescope Magazine is chartering a plane from Chile, which will intercept totality over the ocean at about 38,000 feet. That'll give folks one minute, 45 seconds of totality. Prices start right around $4,500. Unfortunately for me, budget concerns means the December 4th eclipse will be the first total solar eclipse I'll be sitting out in about five years. But don't despair. There's one coming to the U.S. on April 8th, 2024, hitting cities like Austin, like Indianapolis, Toledo, Ohio, even in parts of Buffalo, New York, near Niagara Falls. A beautiful site, and uh, it'll be incredible to see. So set your calendars for that. It's a Monday, so you might want to take time off now if you can. In the meantime, we can enjoy Thursday night's lunar eclipse as a good consolation prize. No need for glasses, telescopes, nothing like that. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.